This video has been sponsored by Nuage Networks. For more information on the Nuage Virtualized Services Platform and how Nuage is delivering consistent policy-driven automation across data centers, the WAN, and branch locations everywhere, please visit nuagenetworks.net and follow us on Twitter at Nuage Networks. We hope you enjoy the session. After watching this video, visit ipspace.net slash sdn to learn more about software-defined networking and overlay virtual networks. Before going into the discussion of availability zones, let's define the failure domain first. It's really hard to find a good definition, and this is the best one I found. A failure domain is area impacted when a key device or service experiences problems. Examples might be a VLAN when you get a broadcast storm. So a single VLAN is a single failure domain. An OSPF area. Either you generate too many updates and then you get flooding problems, or someone connects to the area and starts inserting bogus information. In both cases, you have no tools that would prevent that error from spreading across the whole OSPF area. So yet again, a single failure domain. Controller-based networks. If you're relying on your controller for end-to-end -end connectivity and the controller fails, obviously, the whole network is down. And finally, an instance of a cloud management system is also a single failure domain. That's why almost all big cloud providers use a hierarchy of failure domains. First, they split their infrastructure into regions. Regions are cloud instances that have separate API endpoints. So each region would have its own copy or cluster of cloud management systems. So that if you get problems within one region, for example, you get database corruption or you hit a software bug and that cluster of cloud management systems crashes, all the other regions are unaffected. As you know, when Amazon has bad hair day and one of the regions is down, there are numerous people who are unreachable and Netflix is always up and running because they designed their application in a way that they spread the load over multiple regions. Even if Amazon loses one region completely, Netflix is not affected. Within a region, you would have one or more availability zones. The OpenStack definition is that an availability zone is a logical group that provides some form of physical isolation and redundancy. So you would have common cloud management platform, but for example, you would have isolated networking failure domains. And if we are talking about controller-based networking, I already explained that a single controller is a single failure domain. This means that you should have a different SDN controller for every availability zone. Now, let's see what happens if. If the cloud management platform fails, well, it's not nice, but all the workloads are still running. In most cases, you can't make any changes. The topology might be frozen. The virtual networks are frozen. High availability clusters may or may not be able to recover depending on the implementation. You lose visibility, but all the workloads are running. Nothing changes. As long as the workloads are running, they are fine. If you want to add a new VM, obviously you can't because the cloud management platform is down. This has actually happened at least once to Amazon. And while you couldn't do anything with their APIs, your virtual machines were happily running and delivering services to the customers. Now, what if an SDN controller fails? If that controller is involved in a data plane, for example, if the controller is doing Mac learning or even worse, doing R++, then a controller cluster failure means a total failure of the network. If the controller is only involved in the control plane, so for example, the controller is exchanging BGP information with the rest of the world, then obviously if the controller cluster crashes, 
you will lose the reachability information, which means that your VMs won't be reachable. Bad. On the other hand, if you rely on static routing and appliances that provide connectivity between a tenant and the outside world, then even if you lose the controller, it's approximately as bad as if you lose the cloud management platform. So the more involved an SDN controller is with the forwarding process, the worse the network fares when the controller fails. But as I said, the very minimum is that each availability zone should have an independent SDN controller. And if we take a look at what Nuage is doing with VSP, as I mentioned, you would have a single cloud management platform per region. You would have a single VSD per region. But then VSD works on the policy plane, which means that VSD failure is identical to cloud management platform failure. You aren't able to add new things because you cannot get the policy that you need to handle with them. On the other hand, I would have one VSC controller cluster per availability zone. So if that cluster fails, the failure does not spread across multiple zones. And I would exchange BGP information through a set of route reflectors. I would treat maybe, well, this now depends on your security requirements. I would treat the information exchanged through BGP maybe as somewhat dubious and fill, apply the usual BGP security mechanisms to protect the availability zones. For example, you might say, I will only accept this many prefixes per customer from the availability zone or something. And obviously, within each availability zone, you would have at least a pair of VSGs. Oh, by the way, I haven't mentioned VSGs before. VSG is the equivalent of a PE router, and I'll talk about them when I get to the hardware gateways. By the way, I would never ever stretch a single physical VLAN across multiple availability zones. I don't care that much what you do within the availability zone. I would, of course, use as narrow VLANs as possible. So I would try to limit a VLAN to a single top of rack switch. But okay, if you have a single VLAN across the whole availability zone, it is, after all, one availability zone, so maybe you are okay. But never ever stretch a transport, the underlay VLAN across availability zones, because then you just created a single failure domain. You just merged the availability zones. If you like this video, go to ipspace.net slash cloud to explore other overlay virtual networking webinars.